to Castle Park, the home of Doncaster Knights for round 16 of the RFU Championship. And today's visitors are the Cornish Pirates. And ahead of this feature, I am pleased to say that none other than Malik Holden has decided to join me. Malik, what a day for a game of rugby. The conditions look perfect. How are you feeling ahead of this? Yeah, really, really excited. Uh, we've got a couple of weeks off since our game against Scottish, so super excited former team um, close in the table so yeah it's, it's a game that you want to be a part of really we'll get to the former team thing later on because I want to pick your brains about some people that might be playing today um, but talk to me about how much today a win might mean for you guys as a side as a whole because the bonus point sees you march up into second yeah to be honest it's not something we've been talking about for a while I think just the performance you know you beat the guys that you can get four or five points and we'll see what happens and we're just kind of going performance based and then the table will take care of itself sooner now talk to me about your opposition as well actually the cornish pirates themselves i mean a very heavily forward dominated side i mean the stat alone that morgan nelson has got eight tries to his name as a hooker mm. really speaks volumes for itself uh, what are you expecting from the visitors today a lot of that they're brilliant when they get into the 22 they love the more they love the patient play in the in the 22 so penalties are massive for us in terms of discipline if you can stop them from getting penalties and making entries into a 22 i think we're going to be in a pretty good position um but yeah they're a good team they know what they're doing they know who they are which is a, a thing that i think you need to do in this this league have an identity and they've got that in space to be fair now let's talk about doncaster knights as a whole i said to you just off camera this is my first time up here but what an amazing place to come and play some rugby uh, are you enjoying your time up here are you loving life up at doncaster yeah i love it obviously i said i was at cornwall so a long way from home eight towers to probably to home to Liverpool and here it's a lot closer with a few more north 
governors, yeah, I love it. It's a brilliant place, brilliant club, and um, you know, from top to bottom, it's a good place. Now let's uh, do a quick word on your side as well before I let you get stuck into the uh, the warm ups themselves. Mm -hmm. um, who should we keep our eyes on? I mean, I'm looking across the whole side, and there's stacks of talent everywhere you look. For for us, or for them. For you. Uh, for us, uh, well, Joe Margaret just came back from a ban. Uh, he's one of the, the most special players I've played with, to be honest. He's just got ability, everything. He's handsome, he's good looking. Um, it's a bit of a shame, really. He's got all of the, all, all of the <laughs> positives, to be honest. Um, but yeah, he's, he's coming back, so I think he's raring to go. AJ Kant on the bench, he, he's another former Cornish Pirates player and I, I think he's a he's a top player, he's really excited, he's been out for quite a while so hopefully they'll come on and have a real good game. Excellent, someone's been reading my pre-match notes. Well, Malik, thank you very <laughs> much for joining me, I'll go let you get stuck into the warm-up and for now, let's take a look at exactly how our teams line up for this Goliath fixture. Doncaster make five changes to the starting 15 that triumphed on the road. 34-20 against London Scottish at the Richmond Athletic Ground. George Roberts, a fresh set of legs in the front row. And just behind him, former Major League Rugby talisman Evan Minton slots into the engine room. And former Scotland under-20, Archie Smetton is the final change in the pack. Both those two impressing from the bench last time out. In the back line, there's been a reshuffle of positions from last time as well, along with two new centres. Former Dragon Connor Edwards comes in at 12, and Buck Super Rugby winner Joe Marquette is alongside him and outside centre. Keep your eyes, though, on fan favourite Billy McBride moving from 10 to 15 this afternoon. The powerhouse of Doncaster, Charlie Beckett, moves from the starting 15 last week to the in Pat replacements this time around alongside him in that bench an exciting Doncaster Academy product in Adam Hopkinson and keep your eyes on former pirate himself AJ Kant a man no stranger to a try and a dangerous run here at Castle Park the visitors Cornish Pirates up for four changes in their starting side who last time out won 33-14 in Penzance over Amptill. Tight head Matt Johnson comes into the front row with workhorse Steel Barker just squeezing in behind him moving into that second row. This time Australian Hugh Bockenham packs down at eight today. Let's hope he's got those long studs with him again. A former Cherry and White Kyle Moyle is the only replacement in that backfield moving in at fullback for the Pirates with the likes of Inform Will Truing keeping their spots in the starting team. Pirates have a plethora of replacement talent to pick from, including several Buck Super Rugby alumni players. BSR winner Finn Richardson will be looking to add his strength into the front row later today. 2020 BSR Fans Player of the Year Will Gibson is ready and waiting to contribute to the back row. And Buck Super Rugby try machine Arthur Relton is also standing by for the Pirates from Penzance. Well, there you go, everyone. You've seen how the teams are going to line up for today, and you can see them there running out onto this Castle Park pitch ahead of this afternoon's titanic encounter between absolute powerhouses of English Championship Rugby. And a special mention as well. You'll notice as the home side run out today, they are wearing one away sock and one home sock. This is to raise awareness of Down Syndrome as part of World Down Syndrome Day 2024. The Cornish Pirates have also taken part, as well as the referees, thanks to the Knights' efforts. And it's an excellent demonstration by the Knights of their commitment, not just to the rugby community up here, but the wider community of Doncaster and South Yorkshire as a whole. And well, without further ado, standing in the middle is Bruce Houston of the Cornish Pirates. And we are underway here at Castle Park in round 16 of the English Championship.
of the Cornish Pirates. And we are underway here at Castle Park in round 16 of the English Championship. First big first carry, big first carry, 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 Schwartz standing over to distribute that ball. It's going out wide for the Pirates. Now Kyle Moyle brought to the floor. Johnson's first big carry of the game. Off he goes. Newly introduced into the side today. One of the only changes in that pack. That's a lovely tip on to Alex Everett. And here the Pirates are really starting to build something nicely now. Good carry from Will Truen. But there was no gap for him to run all the way through there for the Pirates. Zagiri Addis. All the front row then for the Pirates who have had their first carry. And they opt now to put boot to ball. Oh, big tackle going in from Morgan Nelson, but the mark was called. And thankfully, Billy McBride has uh, bought his side. A bit of breathing space, a bit of time on the ball to clear their lines. He finds touch uh, with that kick, which means we'll have the first line out of this game pretty much bang on halfway. We spoke briefly in the build about how strong this Pirates pack are, and it's no surprise the last time out when these two played each other down in Cornwall. The Pirates had a 100% success rate at the line out. And that is off to a good start once again for the Pirates. They also love a driving ball, and Morgan Nelson loves exploiting the back of it. Here comes Schwartz now, off the tip from the hooker. Good carry there from Alex Schwartz, making Pirates a good 10, 15 metres. Zagiri Addis carrying on his own now into contact. He's gone out into that back line. Oh, little show and go there from Joe Elderkin. Thought he might have seen a bit of space there, but it's going out to that far side. Matt McNabb has come well off his left wing there to try and get some runs in the middle. Schwartz sees a bit of space over the top but it's gone out on the full. So that's a nice easy out for Doncaster Knights. They'll have their own line out now. And they've been able to repel the first real Pirates attack of the game. Looking to come firing out the blocks here, the Pirates. But we have got a bit of time now for George Roberts. He's down receiving a little bit of treatment. Newly introduced into the side today after uh, an injury. A little muscle tweak to regular hooker Tom. But luckily George is up and already joining in the team huddle where they'll announce to him the call that they want to go with at the line out. And whilst they take their time to get there, just a special mention to all the Doncaster and Cornish Pirates fans that have joined us here today. There is a sea of rugby fans and supporters here with us in Doncaster. And Russell Bennett with his first kick of the game, sends that down the throat of Will True, and he's got a bit of space in front of him if he wants to use it. And it's very windy here today at Castle Park, so kicking will become a little bit more difficult than perhaps the sides might have rehearsed. That's been touched back from the kick, so it will be a goal line dropout. And these are always interesting to see how sides react off the back of them. Here we go, Russell Bennett now getting us started from the goal line dropout. It's down the throat of Kyle Moyle. Moyle sends that on one more to Bockenham. Puts his head down and he's brought to the floor by Connor Davidson and co. Great defence from the Knights. Mistake in the backfield from Pirates. It's gone backwards, it's not a knock on, so we play on. Another big hit going in from the Knights pack, courtesy of Ben Murphy that time. Pirates building still, and another huge hit. Joe Margot going straight in on Bockenham. And the Pirates number eight will be feeling that for the rest of the game, that's for sure. And a simple one-off run there by Alex Everett, tucking his head down. Alex Schwartz wants a, a better platform to be able to make a clearance kick with, but it's, it's hard to illustrate it really with my own words. But it's very windy here. So that high ball hasn't gained many metres. It will hang nicely in the air for the chase. And unfortunately, there's not much Russell Bennett can do because he is snuffled up 
by the Pirates chasers. So it's another threatening position for Pirates to have a line out from. We expect a drive from them because we know how strong a weapon they have there at their disposal. And we await the throw of Morgan Nelson. Good take there from Will Britton and now the Pirates set for another rolling mall drive but the initial shove is repelled by the Knights defence. And now Pirates have a penalty advantage but they also seem to have shifted into second gear. Schwartz wanted to pass that on one more. That was a good tackle going in for the fly half, Bennett. So it'll be interesting to see what the decision is with the wind playing havoc already with the kicking game. Points might not be an option here, although these sorts of conditions, no stranger to those who have journeyed up from Penzance with the Pirates today. And they are going to kick into the corner. A huge shout out to those fans who have come up from Penzance today. It's 370 miles to Castle Park here in the north. And this is a big moment now for both sides. Doncaster needs to put in a huge defensive set now and concede no errors. And the Pirates are five metres out from scoring a try. And we're still within the first 10 minutes of this game. Here come the Pirates now. Britain takes the ball and it's down. Here comes the driving mall. Will it start to rumble towards the line? Nelson is in the steering seat now for the Pirates. Trying to spin around that Doncaster defence. Are they going to bundle over and score? They will. Morgan Nelson gets the game's first try. And it's his ninth of the season for the Pirates. And they are the ones to strike first here at Castle Park. So an ideal start for the visitors. And the home side haven't really had an attack of their own. So it's not panic stations just yet. They'll regroup underneath the posts and look to go again very, very shortly indeed. And I am starting to worry about the win because the uh, scaffolding I'm currently housed in is causing a lot of amusement to the fans that are situated just in front of me. I don't think I'm going to blow away, but if I do, please catch me. And you can see here now, the ball having to be hold, held in the tee for Bruce, Bruce Houston. And just look at the way that those posts are swaying in the wind as well. You can see it in the back of your screen. You can see it in front of me, but what a beautiful kick from Houston. No extra points, unfortunately. So it remains 5-0, and there is the try scorer on your screen, Morgan Nelson. Former Bucks Super Rugby player with Cardiff Met. So he's played alongside Doncaster Knights fly half Russell Bennett before, and it was Bennett who got us kicked off once again. And a penalty conceded by John Stevens, the Pirates captain, holding on the floor. So Doncaster now given the invitation to send themselves into the Pirates' territory, into that red zone. And there goes McBride's kick. And they'll still be a good 15 metres out here, Doncaster. So whether they keep it in the forwards or send it in the backs is yet to be seen. George Simpson is out there in no man's land on his own at the moment, hugging that far side touchline. Will the ball make it to him? Good take at the line out for the Knights. And now it's George Roberts burying his head in the mall, trying to steer the ship, get his pack closer to that Pirates line. But the shove is really well held there by the Pirates. It's out in that back line. First big run from Connor Edwards. Edwards rides the challenges. He's still going forward now. Here come the Knights. Roberts again. Done well, the hooker there to fold round the corner. Gets stuck in right from the get-go. Oh, a little mistake there from Davidson. But luckily, 
Jack Diffig, the captain, was there to pick things up. No big errors from the Knights. Still inside the 22, building towards what could be a big try. But that's also a big hit going in on Digby. And now the Knights are outside that Pirates 22. Here they come switching the play. And that's a big hit again on Ben Murphy. The tackles are flying in here at the moment. Bennett thinks he sees some space. Simpson! Simpson had the ball and had some space, but a little handling error there from the winger means that we will restart with a Cornish Pirates scrum. Uncharacteristic of the winger. But of course, the conditions not really helping with any sort of long passes or long kicks because the wind's going to blow it far away from your intended target at the moment. And whether this wind will die down at all at any stage in this match is yet to be seen, but I highly doubt it as well. Well, with our first scrum of the, te of the game, let's talk about scrum success last game. Pirates, again with 100% success in the pack at scrum time. Knights, 71%, but those were several months ago. And we won't even get to experience the scrum because a free kick has been awarded to the Pirates. Infringement coming in from the Doncaster Knights. So this is a chance now for Pirates to get a bit of breathing space. That's gone downfield once again to George Simpson. He looks like he's going to pin his ears back and run for it. He does indeed. Bounces off the first challenge and he makes some good meters there for the Knights as they go down that blind side. And this one's going to go up into the air. That's a lovely kick into the wind. Really good work from Alex Dolly. Now the Pirates will need to do something special to play this out from the back. And really good work there from Matt McNabb to cut in on his run, actually. Put the Doncaster defence under some significant pressure because if he had broken through, there's a lot of space and a lot of support with the winger. Good disruption efforts again from Connor Edwards at the breakdown. He's having a fantastic start to the game after his three-week ban. But that's another kick that's hanging in the air and not getting much distance. So that'll be a problem for many, but it's collected by Archie Smeaton. And Smeaton gets his side an advantage and on the front foot, Digby. I'm oh, sorry, Evan Minton, sorry, carrying really well still the second rower. And that's been intercepted off the back of McBride's pass. He was looking out the back for a teammate, but instead found the clutches of Will Truen. And there is Malik Holden just uh, having a word with the referee. It was great to have him in our pre-match build-up. He was feeling very positive uh, ahead of the game today. And he did speak fondly off camera about his time with the Pirates. But he does like the proximity to his family home from up here in Doncaster versus the eight-hour trip he used to have to experience, he was telling me, from Cornwall. Thanks to that kick now, George Roberts will step up to being about eight metres out from the Cornish Pirates line. Let's see what the Knights can do on this occasion. It's a miss throw. The wind, I think, is the one to blame there on that occasion. It was way out of reach for the Pirates. And now here we go. Malik Holden trying to get around the defenders, but brought down by Johan Evans. It was almost looking like a turnover there for the Pirates. Quick hands, though, from Digby and his fellow forwards. Resulted in a mistake, but not a knock-on, says the referee. But the assistant is calling it in on this near side. So we will have a scrum down Cornish Pirates ball. Touch and go starts at the moment for the Knights. They've had moments of brilliance, but they've also had moments like just then where very small errors have led to the Pirates being gifted possession once again. Let's see if this time we get a proper scrum scene all the way through as well by the two packs. Last time 
It resulted in a free kick. So this, I'm I'm counting this one as the first real scrum of the game. Still not have one. Swartz with the put in and Pirates get the shove on. Pirates get more than just a shove. They get a penalty advantage as well. They'll try and play out with it. It was a missed pass from Swartz. It's still alive for them if they want to use it. Lovely kick onto that far side for Will Truen to chase. But the ball will beat all of them into touch and we will come back for the initial penalty. Great vision from Johan Evans in the centres to see that Truen was in a lot of space. And we know that Truen has got the gas. And he's got the skill as well with the ball in his hand to finish in the corner. But let's see where this one's going to end up under the win because Pirates currently playing into it. And that will ruin their potential territory gain. Oh, and Malik Holden tried to bring that one back into play, but he landed in touch still from collecting the ball in touch. So it will be a line out for the Pirates. This is another big moment. We can't have the, pir the Pirates scoring another try within the first 20 and again from another driving mall. I'm sure the Knights will feel exactly the same. They're ready to get their heads stuck in. A lot of uh, trickery and movement at the line out there by the Pirates. and They seem to have uh, done a bit too much there because the throw wasn't straight from Nelson as a result and the Knights have the ball again. And all the Doncaster fans around me can breathe a little bit easier for a second. Because their side have the ball back right on their own line. So here we go, another big moment at scrum time. Cornish Pirates winning that first scrum quite substantially. So Doncaster needs a bit of a statement drive now. Good hit from both sides, but once again, Pirates getting a significant drive on. But now it's ended in a penalty for Doncaster, wheeling at the scrum by lefty Zik Zagiriadis. of the wheeling conceded by the loose head oh that's a sliced kick by Billy McBride he won't be happy with that one we won't show any replays of that but Doncaster have the ball they have the line out and they want a scrum penalty at the last scrum so that will give the forwards a little bit of confidence again Oh, good take at the, at the line-out by Ben Murphy. Fierce competition there against the second rower. And there goes Digby, the captain. All oh, the ball's flown out there. The wind probably blowing it out as well. Bennett doing well under pressure, and he gets a kick away. But because they've carried it back into their own 22, and he's kicked it out on the full, Pirates have a line-out inside the Doncaster 22. see the uh, the shirts of Doncaster even as tight as rugby shirts are still flapping around in this wind and that's a, a lovely peel around the edges by the Pirates as Bockenham who got the ball from the tip on and then Nelson was there to support him but Morgan Nelson was sent into touch rather than towards the try line and Doncaster get possession once more Just take a look at it, it was really smart there and you can see the initial run from the number eight and a really good offload as he was falling to the floor. And that's a really good clearance kick under pressure actually from Alex Dolly. A 
and the cheers coming in from the sideline for the Pirates as they take the line out now. It's in the centres. What? Bit of a change up there in the middle from Evans as you look down the field. There's no one there chasing onto it. It's going to roll out beyond the dead ball line and we'll go all the way back to where the Cornish 13 kicked from. And he's shaking his head. He knew what he did wrong as soon as it left his boot. But because of this win, there was nothing even a brilliant chase could do to counteract it. And uh, this is a moment now where the front row for Doncaster, Davidson, Roberts and Thede, really need to dig deep against the Pirates pack because they've already got a big shove on a couple of times. Yes, they conceded a penalty for wheeling, but they do need to win a bit of scrum dominance back. A referee not happy with that picture. It wasn't uh, stable enough after the initial hit on the set call. And we'll move along a little bit so we don't tear up this beautiful pitch that Doncaster have up here at Castle Park. Fantastic level of facilities. It's no surprise that they pass those minimum standards criteria set out by the RFU as announced earlier this week. And the referee, again, not happy with the scrum picture. I actually think it's Lewis Thede who's not happy with it as well. The tight head just gesturing to the referee, making his discomfort and displeasure known. He's going up against lefty Zagiriadis, on loan from Ealing at the moment, the South African. And he's been a, a key component of that Pirates scrum and indeed some of the dominance that they felt within that forward pack already this season. And they lead 5-0 at the moment from the try by fellow front rower Morgan Nelson. But the Knights are looking to respond. And that's a much better picture from the Knights holding nice and steady. A lovely tip on to Dolly out the back. Bennett now. Simpson. Simpson cutting back in on his own. He had Holden outside him. But he took it in himself. Good work there from Digby to keep the ball alive for the Doncaster Knights. Lovely quick ball for the home side at the moment to use. Oh, and is that a knockdown deliberately by Will Truin? They wanted to get the tip on. And the Pirates winger has indeed been shown a yellow card. So he marches off to the side and we'll have a period of 10 minutes now where the Cornish Pirates are down to 14 men. And that's a big moment in the course of this game because... That'll take us to within the final 10 minutes before half time. And so if the Knights can get a score now and maybe apply a bit more pressure while the Pirates are down to 14, they could see them reach some serious rewards. And that's it's an uncharacteristic mistake from Truin. He's had a fantastic season for the Pirates since coming up through their development program, spending some time with Red Ruth as well down in Cornwall. And Pirates have stolen that at the line out now off the Doncaster Knights. And here they go, building out the back with Everett. Trying to give Alex Schwartz a better picture to kick from. This ball needs some distance, and indeed it gets that. Just look at that air hang time, and it falls over his opposite number, Dolly, who's done well under the tackle to keep the ball on the night side. Roberts carries in now. And Dolly straight back into action, the scrum off. Good feet there from Archie Smeaton. Smeaton still carrying. Pirates trying to hold him up. But Smeaton's fought his way to the floor now. Here go the Doncaster Knights with Joe Margett. Inside the 22 now. Here they go. Big hit going in on Finn Brown. Lovely running lines from Connor Edwards. The Knights are on the front foot. The wind is in their sails. And there goes another handling error. This time Finn Brown meaning that the Knights concede possession, but 
Luckily for them, they had a penalty advantage on the far side for offside. So they'll send this one into the corner. You've seen the camera close in there on Finn Brown. Yes, he made the uh, mistake. We've gone back for the penalty advantage, but he also made some really good carries in that most recent melee forward. And the Knights will need to continue to look to their forwards for some dominant carries in this match if they want to establish some good territory and get some points ticking over on that scoreboard as well. 25 minutes gone, still 5-0 in favour of the Pirates. And here go the Knights. Great take from Ben Murphy. Getting above his opposition and claiming the ball and Knights have got themselves an adv another advantage. They're going to want to use it though because they started to be marched backwards. Referee calls it. And Dolly's held up from taking the quick one there. Very cheeky smart play there from John Stevens, the captain, stopping the number nine from going quickly. Doesn't matter because Russell Bennett sends this one straight back into the corner and asks is Doncaster pack to go again? And we're just taking a look at a, a replay of the most recent passage of play, but the, the lineouts happened without us. And Doncaster nearly scored themselves, but they were held up over the line by the Cornish Pirates. So goal line dropout now. But a really promising moment from the Pirates, from the Knights, sorry, that the Pirates had to just let them go over their own line and hold them up. Morgan Nelson just having a, a little word with the physio out on that far side as well. Hopefully for the Pirates, the hook is okay to continue, but there's some concern around that shoulder by the looks of things. Going to continue without Morgan Nelson anyway. Well, he's back up. He's had a blast of uh, deep freeze or deep heat. And now here come Doncaster. Big carry from Connor Edwards again. He's been penned up for three weeks. He's letting all the energy that he's built up out now. But here come Doncaster. George Simpson running into a bit of space now. He's got men with him if he needs him. Beautiful offload. Doncaster straight back in to the Pirates red zone. Finn Brown now spills it in the tackle. Zagiriadis carries it forward now for Pirates. And we'll take another look at it in a bit because that was a fantastic carry by George Simpson on the far side. And now the Pirates trying to clear their lines for definite. They've been under the cosh a little bit over the last five or so minutes. And Simpson now taking the ball. Doesn't want to kick it. He wants to run it straight back. And he'll run it straight into Bruce Houston. Big carry there. Evan Minton getting stuck in since being brought in to the starting 15. Bennett sees some space in behind. Oh, and it's not been taken there by the Pirates. They spilt it forward. So here come the Doncaster Knights. Smeaton. Oh, it's been knocked forward by both sides. That's why we've stopped again. So we'll have a scrum down Doncaster ball. But let's take a look at that earlier break whilst we see Thede down receiving some treatment. But this was just a beautiful run from George Simpson getting around the outside of the defensive shoulder. And he did throw the pass off. But it just needed to go a fraction earlier. And the Knights could have been in for a score of their own as well in this game. George Roberts was the man outside him. But the hooker did so well to try and pr pick that one up as well. And we can see Thede just receiving a, a little bit of treatment there around his head tape. So hopefully it's just a little, little scratch or a little knock that needs to be sealed up. And it'll get cracking once again.
Well, we've had our stoppage for treatment and a little bit of water, so we'll get restarted with the Doncaster scrum again. And you can't see it on your screen at the moment because we're on the scrum itself. But Malik Holden is off the pitch right now. He's out so wide. Talk about holding your, your width as a winger. And that's a really good scrum again from the Pirates. And Dolly was looking to go down the blind side himself. And he switches it out into that open. Bennett now looks downfield for Holden to get on the ball. But the wind's going to carry that one high and wide out into touch. So Pirates ball again at the line out. And a bit of miscommunication off of the scrum from the Knights. They've got about three minutes or so until Will Truen comes back on from serving his sin bin period. Remember, the winger knocked the ball on deliberately in defence, so that's why he was sent packing for a short while. And the referee just urging the Cornish Pirates to get on with it, get in the line out, and let's get going again. It's getting cold standing around there with no action. And here come the Pirates again with another strong maul set up. No surprises there that Nelson has it safely at the back, and Pirates have another penalty as a result of really good forward pack work. And the watch is off once again. So we'll just take a moment here for Captain John Stevens to receive a little bit of treatment. He's got that right knee taped up very heavily. Well, here comes Houston now, stepping up, lining up the kick for the corner. The wind will take this off to the left, so it depends how much distance he wants to take. And that one has sailed comfortably into touch, just outside the Doncaster Knights 22. Here come the Pirates now. And still Barker was the one thrown up to take the ball, but the Knights have stolen it. And there goes Smeaton again. The open side is everywhere trying to get his hands on that ball. And Dolly is going to put some distance on this. It's going to be a tricky one for McNabb to take, but he is underneath it. McNabb still going forward. McNabb not held in the tackle. But he lays it back for his team. Zagiri Addis. Good carry from the loose head. Houston. It's in to the captain. Everett sends that one out the back. And Pirates looking to spread it to the width again with McNabb. Nelson. Lovely inside tips to Zagiri Addis. Schwartz is on the tip from the loose head. That's a big fight and tussle for the ball there between the Knights and Pirates. And Nelson picks up the stray pass and the Welshman's done well to secure that ball once again for the Pirates. No arms tackle from George Roberts. So penalty advantage to the Pirates. Are they going to try something fancy and utilize that advantage? Lovely offload in the tackle from Elderkin. He had Kyle Moyle running off his shoulder to take the offload, but the inside centre couldn't get the ball away cleanly to him. With the wind still playing havoc, this penalty slightly more infield. It'll be interesting to see if Pirates opt for the three points and take them outside of a converted score away from the home side. We're just going to take a... or we were going to take a moment because a player's receiving treatment, but the referee's actually urging... Pirates to get on with their choice of sending it into the corner. And, well, we saw how they scored their first try, so it's no surprise that they want to try that again. And here we go. Another driving line out. Just beyond the five-meter line. Houston would have wanted a bit more distance on that, but it's still a good kick from the fly half with the conditions.
Good take there from Pirates once more. It's another strong setup for a driving mall. Doncaster did all they could to try and disrupt it. And Finn Brown's got onto the wrong side to try and cause more disruption. But still, the Pirates come forward now. McNabb adding his weight. That's once, says the referee. Here they go. It's down on the floor. Doncaster have done well to defend this. And Pirates have somehow got that ball out. Everett now. Stopped just short of the line now by the Doncaster defence. But I think that's Finn Brown who's managed to get his hands on it and turn it over for the home side. Dolly's got the ball at his feet. Doncaster have indeed turned this ball over. Great defensive set from the forwards. Well, the Pirates aren't giving up easy. though. They're fighting back with everything. To steal it back off the Knights once more. Bennett's right behind this ruck to potentially make the clearance kick, but Dolly does it himself. And Mac McNabb will watch that one into touch. Brilliant work there from the Doncaster Knights pack. For a second, it looked almost like a sure bet for the Pirates as they were motoring towards the try line, but the Knights dug deep. And every single one of them got in to stop the attacking effort. But we have got a player down at the moment. I think that's Ben Murphy that the physio's got a bit of concern for. Again, it's a knee that they're just investigating right now. Yeah, you can see him there on your screen, Ben Murphy. Hope it's nothing too serious because he's been brilliant in the line outs and he's been brilliant in the open play for the Knights. I can't see anyone running up and down the sidelines on the other side of the pitch to warm up and replace him. He is back on his feet, doing a few tests just to see if he is able to continue. And there you go, he's off to rejoin his forward pack. That's reassuring signs from the former Cardiff rugby player. Still Barker once again takes the ball for Pirates. <laughs> and that ball is stopped in its tracks on this occasion. Morgan Nelson <laughs> is trying to get the movement going, trying to get the drive started. And this time, Thede's got himself on the other side to do some disruption. It's down by the Pirates. Can they play it out? They can. And here they go. Elderkin inside the Knights 22. Steel Barker. Can't miss that tall second row frame, can you? Alex Everett now. Is he held up by the Knights defenders? Tackled and on the floor. Big run there from the captain, John Stevens. But we've got to stop play because we have a head injury. So the referee just pausing the clock and pausing the game. There's a little bit of concern here for the man that's down. A note that I uh, didn't mention earlier as well is that Wilturin is back on from his yellow card cameo. So he's returned from the sim bin in his number 14 jersey. Well, it's so far in this half. The score reflecting the Pirates are the better side, but actually they've been very evenly matched, these two. Pirates scoring very early on, and perhaps it was the wake-up call that Doncaster needed to, to switch on in this fixture and to, to take the fight to them. That's certainly what they've done in this final third of the first half. Only recently have the Pirates been able to get back down the other end and in a dangerous bit of the park. Well, there he is on your screen, the smiling Sinbin man. And there's Houston again. Houston's had a good game so far. Lots of out-the-back passes going in at the moment from uh, the Cornish Pirates and lots of little tips off the run into contact. And there's a red card. A red card for Malik Holden. You can only assume that it was for a high hit. We'll be desperately looking in amongst the replays for that. But he's been dismissed. 
And well, Doncaster are down to 14 for the rest of this game. And it's the former Cornish Pirate Malik Holden who is walking off the pitch. Uh, once again, we are we are looking to see where that might have occurred. But a red card's been shown. And so he will play no further part in this fixture. And the Pirates will have a man advantage for the rest of the match, which is a good 43 minutes or so. Our clock didn't stop. And there's probably a good three minutes left on the referees. And now the Pirates are five metres out. There he is on your screen, Malik Holden. Be interesting to see if we can get a word from the Doncaster camp at half time to confirm exactly what's happened. But for now, Pirates up and Britain takes the ball down. Set at the back with Nelson once more and that's another really strong Pirates drive over the Knights line. And it's try number two for the forwards. It's try number two of the day for the Cornish Pirates. And it's try number 10 of the season for Morgan Nelson. No surprises that he got the honours throughout the Wales age grade system that he does have to his name because it looks incredibly easy from afar, but I can assure you it's a very difficult job to remain in control of that ball in amongst the chaos of a driving ball. And you can see there the Pirates pack just split open the defensive effort of the Doncaster Knights. And this is another really difficult angle for the conversion of, uh, of Bruce Houston to go over from. Here we go, Bruce Houston standing over the ball. Oh, the wind just died down as he went and kicked the ball and he was factoring in a big gust to take that more to the left and he just to the sky asking where on earth that wind disappeared to. But there's the try scorer, Morgan Nelson. All 10 points in this match to his name. At one point we were concerned for his shoulder, but I guess we shouldn't have been concerned in the slightest because the Pirate is into double digits now for tries this season, which is outstanding from the front rower. And now here come Doncaster Knights on the restart. Bennett's kick is just about kept in field. Oh, just about kept in field by Bockenham. The assistant put his flag up in the sky, then put it straight back down again because he wasn't sure. And then Pirates are able to clear their lines and now they've got to have a conversation about where exactly a line out's going to take place from. And they've come to a decision that it's going to take place on the 10 meter line just inside the Pirates half. It was a really good effort, actually, from uh, the Australian Bockenham to, to try and keep that in. I should mention as well that my long studs reference in the build-up was the fact that I've heard from the Pirates camp that they often needed to remind him when he first moved to the side that he will need some long, long studs to play in England because he's used to such hard ground in Australia. Well, that's a lovely bit of play at the front there for the for the Doncaster Knights and Evan Minturn. I'm used to saying it's Pirates with some really good line-out play, but now the Knights have come alive at the set-piece. Playing really well now. Dolly down to this blind side now, and Margetts carrying forwards. The set backwards by Schwartz, who's getting in the way of his presentation of the ball. No advantage, though, for the Knights. And Captain Digby carries. Bennett. Ooh, a long one more to Connor Davidson. And it bounced out of his hands and he regathered, but he was smack upright when the tackle came in. And Pirates conceded a penalty for not rolling away.
Well, this is probably one of the final moments of the first half, and it would be really important for Doncaster Knights to get some points on the board because you don't want to go into the halftime break with a big zero next to your name. No one does. And they don't deserve that either because they have had some moments of brilliance in this game. Ben Murphy and Finn Brown have carried really well. Smeaton as well in that second and back row. George Simpson has been brilliant, as has Russell Bennett. And Billy McBride too. So here come Doncaster. They are the ones to set the driving mall now. George Roberts at the back, ball in hand, controlled nicely. They've got the penalty advantage again. Pirates penalised for collapsing the mall. And Bennett initially looked to the corner. And after conferring with his side, he will indeed send it there. And still we go on. A reminder as well that the reason why the win would be so important for Pirates today is that it would suddenly leapfrog them into second in the table, which is currently where the Pirates sit. And with other games across the championship being played, they could almost switch places with each other. This is really nice from Doncaster Knights, but it's also really good from the Pirates, shepherding them out into touch. And bringing the half to a close. Confirmation from the referee's whistle that that is indeed the half-time call. And it finishes Doncaster Knights 0, Cornish Pirates 10 after the first 40 minutes. And it has been a lot closer than the scoreline might reflect. But it's a game now that will be decided by the use of the cards. Will Truin was given a yellow early on for the Pirates. So he was gone for 10 minutes and the Knights couldn't take advantage of that. And Morgan Nelson is the only one to have got on the scoreboard. You see him just there scattering off into the changing rooms. But then a big decision came in to send number 11, Malik Holden off for the Doncaster Knights. He's been red carded for the rest of the game. So the Knights will be down to 14 and the Pirates will have a man advantage for the rest of the time. This could be a big second half from the Knights and they could still steal a victory. But if not, then the Pirates might be laughing all the way back to Penzance. Don't go anywhere because in a very short while, We'll be rejoined by both sides and indeed bring you live coverage of the second half here for round 16 of the RFU Championship.
Welcome back to the second half of round 16 RFU Championship action here at Castle Park, the home of Doncaster Knights. And today, the visitors have been the Cornish Pirates. And the halftime headlines for you are that the Cornish Pirates are 10 0 up. Both tries came from Morgan Nelson, which takes his season tally to 10. And it's currently advantage to the visitors as well because Malik Holden has been red carded from the Doncaster side. Confirmation from our officiating team at halftime that personal foul play infringement means that they have had to leave the field for the remainder of the game. So Doncaster are down to 14. But we await an exciting final 40 minutes because the game is far from decided. One converted try from Doncaster and all of a sudden they are right back in this fight. So it's very easy to see just how quickly the game can be flipped on its head. Well, there's the first big error from Cornish Pirates in this second half. They took the ball back inside their own 22 and then came out with it. It's gone straight into touch. And now it is a Doncaster line out. So uncharacteristic mistake from Alex Schwartz. Here come Doncaster, really good take there from Evan Minturn at the line out for the Knights. And George Roberts is sat back, ball in hand. And here come the reinforcements, here comes the Cavalry. Driving further forward now, that ball is being passed towards the back, it's being passed to Ollie Fox who's joined us. And here goes Minton. Passing out now to Smeaton. Big carries from him in the first half. We'll expect more in the second. Captain Digby spins out the first challenge. Doncaster knocking on the door of the Pirates line. And that is a wayward pass, but a penalty against the Cornish Pirates. And there's another card coming out of the referee's pocket. A yellow here for number 13, Yoan Evans. So both sides down to 14 now. Pirates only temporarily down a player though. Now Doncaster after the di difficult conversation, are they going to take the points or go to the corner? Because remember, converted try and they're right back in this. They're going to take the points. Well, there we go. In stadium confirmation, the number 13, Yoan Evans, former Pontypris player, has been simbin. So the Pirates are down to 14. And Russell Bennett is stood over this one, looking to take. His season total to 71 points. Currently standing on 68. The top point scorer in the team at the moment. And there is club favourite Billy McBride holding the ball in place. And hopefully watch this sail over. Well, there we go. The deadlock is broken. Doncaster have points on the board. It means the score is Doncaster Knights three, Cornish Pirates 10. Doncaster's Russell Bennett has got them on the board. Signed, of course, from Jersey Red towards the beginning of this season after the club's unfortunate collapse. And it's really encouraging to see that he's enjoying such a fruitful time here up in the north with Doncaster Knights as well. It's a really dangerous kick, actually, from Houston. Luckily, uh, Digby was there to take it nice and calmly because the captain suddenly had a wave of pirates on him. Molly Fox is looking for a bit of distance from those pirates players before he does the box kick. He's going into the wind, but he's still got some good distance on it, so there'll be a line out around halfway or around the 10 meter line, actually. He did go out far beyond halfway but the assistant's got a better view than I so Gary Addis is giving his first commands to Morgan Nelson the double try scorer in this game I wouldn't be surprised if we see him go for a hat trick last minute changes at the line out Everett deciding to change the call and the blind side having a word with his loose head here we go Everett does indeed take the ball himself 
Harrods like to keep this ball in the pack and there's no change here now in the second half than there was in the first and it is working for them feed adding his weight now from the back of that ball the Knights trying to stop them it's going forward slowly but surely for the Pirates Schwartz sends it out now here come the Pirates good first carry from Elderkin Elderkin has carried really nicely for Cornish Pirates there but a note remember they are currently down to 14 they've lost their fellow center in Johan Evans Going back to this near side now, and Digby's challenge is bumped off by Steele Barker. Another one to have come through that Red Ruth development process down in Cornwall. And now there's an advantage for the Cornish Pirates as well. They've got their captain, John Stevens, on this blind side. They have an advantage, they want to try it. Schwartz kick was charged down though by Connor Edwards. And uh, we've got a, a bit of a moment down here. I think Will Truen is uh, either dealing with a, a cut or a broken finger or some contacts that need to go in. And he's just going to put some contact lenses in. So if you're squeamish, look away now. You don't want to admire that too closely. But if you are a Pirates fan, what you will want to admire is the fact that they are now five metres out from the Doncaster Knights line once again. Already had one really good catch and drive in this half. This is going to be a second in quick succession. Steele Barker with his hand up and the referee is, is holding us whilst they make sure Will Truen has got his contacts in. We do like to make sure that players can see what they're doing before they get stuck into the game again. And he is up on his feet and he's joined the Pirates line great take in the air there for the Pirates but Doncaster stopping any drive immediately chopping them to the floor Morgan Nelson now spins out he can't make too much ground he does lose the ball in the contact as well but the referee's saying it was lost when he was on the floor with no clear release so it's a penalty for the Pirates be interested to see if they tap and go here or put it in the corner. Houston on the ball now. And there goes Bruce Houston's kick into the corner. And Morgan Nelson will step up once again. The gearing Addis gives the instructions as usual. The wind is starting to pick up as the clouds start to roll in here at Castle Park. Another driving mall line out set by the Cornish Pirates has begun. Weight added in from the back line in Joe Elderkin. And Pirates are brought down early, but the referee is under the post for a penalty try. Seven points more for the Cornish Pirates are added into their game account. And another yellow card is shown in this game. We've got more cards than Clinton's at the moment. So it means that the score is now Doncaster Knights 3, Cornish Pirates 17. And I believe that's Finn Brown being sent to the bin as well for playing his part in the collapsed and failed drive by the Pirates. And all of a sudden, the mountain that they've got to climb is seeming more like Everest. But it's nothing that the Doncaster Knights can't do. And George Simpson is chasing that kickoff down on Russell Bennett, but it's gone out on the full. The fly half knows that that's a big mistake. The Pirates have gone quickly here. They would have had a line out on halfway, but really good thinking from Steele Barker to give it on to Edwards, who passes to Truett, who runs it in the corner. And it's another try. For the Cornish Pirates, courtesy of the inform number 14, Will Truin, and he will wrap up the bonus point. Four tries in this game. And you can see how happy it makes Truin after being simbined earlier on in this match. But really, it all comes from the brilliance 
of the man who's only just been reintroduced into the starting 15 and Steel Barker, the rugby intelligence of the second rower, means that Pirates have pounced and sent themselves skyrocketing into the lead. Let's just take another look at it. Really smart play there from Steel Barker. Very, very flat pass, it must be said, to Elderkin. And Will Trim was there to support the centre by running down the wing and scoring in the corner for the Pirates. Really good work from Elderkin to also hold both Doncaster defenders in. And the Pirates fans really enjoyed that one. And I'm sure all of them enjoyed watching that one back on the replays as well. Bruce Houston now. Can he get the conversion? It was very good, despite the uh, conditions. It's thrown just about an inch or two away from the right-hand post. And so there will be no extras for the Pirates on that occasion. A couple of substitutions coming in for Doncaster. We'll be able to introduce them to you as they get involved in this game. And George Simpson was looking for that kickoff once again. He still might grab it now, but it's finally fallen for John Stevens, the Pirates captain. Pirates conceding the penalty because Stevens just did that second movement on the floor to give his side a little bit more time. Indeed, other Pirates supporters coming in, not staying on their feet. Russell Bennett has no option here, but he's got to send it into the corner because his side are trailing by 19 points. At least three tries, two of them converted to tie the game. We've seen a, a few replacements now for the Pirates. Leaving the field is Schwartz, Nelson and Johnson. Johnson, having had a good game, put his hand up really since being one of the only changes in that front row. But still the Pirates pack firing on all cylinders. And now... Penzance boys have got fresh legs to go with it. Here come Doncaster though. George Roberts has the ball. Do they have a second wave of a shove coming? The crowd urging them on. They're getting closer, but they're also getting closer to that touchline, so they've got to be careful here, Doncaster. Ollie Fox has it in his hands to send it out to the back line when ready. Off it goes. Here they go now. Lovely little show and go and sliding in is Joe Margett. That's exactly the way Doncaster needed to respond. It was brilliant work initially from Connor Edwards to hold the pass. And his outside centre partner goes in for Doncaster's first of the game. At long last, it's come in the 52nd minute of the match. And hopefully Bennett's conversion right in front of the post will take them to 10 and then they'll only trail by 12. Game on now between Doncaster and Cornish Pirates. And that's an easy tap over for Russell Bennett. Wastes no time in getting it done because time is precious now in this game. We mentioned in the build-up about how both of these sides want to push to secure a top three finish. The Cornish Pirates are going the right way about it. Let's take another look at this try. Good work from Wally Fox to hold the ball initially. And he takes it from the back, sends it into his back line, and it's a really good hold of the ball and quick hands from Connor Edwards. So he up to that defensive line at first before tipping it on nicely to Joe Margetts for the score. But here come the Cornish Pirates. Mistake from the kickoff again by Doncaster means that they found themselves in possession. It looks like there's a bit of a afters there from the ruck on the far side, and there's some um, overly affectionate hugging going on, is what I'll describe it as from both sides. Um, we want to play rugby, lads. We don't want to replicate anything that Dana White might be promoting in his spare time. We just let the referee get a control of that on the far side. 
The tensions are high between these two sides because they know just how much is at stake in this game. As we said already, Doncaster would, with a win would leap up to second place in the table with fixtures still to come though in the championship season. And it comes the same week potentially as the RFU clear them of passing the minimum standards criteria to enter the Premiership potentially. Now the referee's just going to have a word here on the far side with his assistant. I'd like to say we're not going to see more cards, but after what we've just experienced, I'm afraid to say that we might see just that. We won't take a replay of it, of course, because we don't want to promote that sort of behaviour on a rugby pitch. We want to celebrate the good rugby that we've been able to experience. Still looking out to see what might happen. The referee's going to have a word now with his captains. Both Digby and Stevens now listening intently to him. It's quite an intense. Uh, discussion going on between the two captains and the lead official well it's a nice little conversation between the captains and the referee it remains a penalty to Doncaster Knights and Dick was just having a word with his side as well because we don't want any more cards in this game and he especially can't afford his side to be handed another red card Already down to 13 as it stands at the moment after receiving a yellow in this second half. And also still trailing by 12. Roberts is ready to go at the line out though. And he's ready to get the Knights started again. Really good take there from Ben Murphy at the line out. Brilliant work from the second rower. And now here comes Doncaster with George Simpson cutting in from that far side. Five minutes out of the line, Simpson to score! What a try from the electric winger George Simpson out of nowhere. Shot out like the bullet from a gun. And he got the score that Doncaster Knights needed. Brilliant work from the winger. And I can't wait to watch a replay of that. Here we go, let's take a look at that. Roberts just biding his time in at the scrum. The ball, sorry, the ball effort, then handing it to Wally Fox. George Simpson cuts inside. Brilliant work and awareness. Had his eyes up and saw the space. And he sliced through it with ease. What a great turn of speed. And what a moment to get a score for Doncaster Knights too. And Bennett's conversion is also good. Doncaster Knights have closed the gap on the Cornish Pirates thanks to that man's try, George Simpson. A moment of individual brilliance on the far side has closed the gap to five. And from 22 3 down, Doncaster Knights could still have a bit of fight left in them against the Cornish Pirates. Fox sends that one down the throat of Buckingham. Here comes Buckingham now, falling in the challenge as one comes in slightly higher from Charlie Beckett, and that's why the big second row is let off. But it's good to see him on the pitch now. He's a very vocal player, great leader to have in the squad, and also leads by example with his physicality. And speaking of physicality, that's another great run from Matt McNabb. And Will Truett is screaming for it on this near side to us in commentary. Houston, 
looked up to see if he could find the winger, but he can't. But it's in the backfield now. Moyle goes himself the fullback, brought down by Digby. And now a penalty conceded by the captain, not rolling away at the ruck. A little bit of footwork there from Cameron Terry. I'm sorry, Reese Williams, the replacement hooker for the Cornish Pirates. McNabb puts a kick in behind. Bennett calls the mark, and we will go back for the Cornish Pirates penalty. Pirates attacking with a lot of speed, a lot of tempo, and a lot of aggression. And you might say that the way that Doncaster can really stop them from scoring anymore or getting into their 22 is by slowing that ball down that's exactly what they're trying to do but they can't do it the way that Jack Digby did and concede a penalty along with it Houston sends this one towards the corner and he's not bit off more than he can chew he's managed to put it out about 10 meters out from the line lots of players run the risk especially in wins like this of it going out beyond the dead ball line or in that dead ball area and they lose all the ground that they would have gained so there's Royal, Royal Marines commando Reese Williams with the ball in his hands. Talking to Zagiri Addis. Interesting to note now as well that that 2020 fans player of the season in Bucks Super Rugby, Will Gibson, is on now. And he is the one that's with the ball. He sent it into the back line. Here come the Pirates. Truin carries forward. Zagiri Addis. Bouncing off one, bouncing off two. Five metres out now, Cornish Pirates sit. Everett. He's brought down nice and early, but they're still looking to use that far side. Steel Buckle with the offload, and the try will be scored by Kyle Moyle. It's another one for the Cornish Pirates to add to their tally. And just as Doncaster Knights had lighted some hope for their fans to enjoy, the visitors extend to an advantageous lead once more. Still got about 20 minutes left to play though in this match. And there's less of a gap than it used to be. Let's have a look at this try again. There's the carry from Everett. And then here's, here's the work of Steel Barker. Great offload in amongst the tackle as he's falling to the ground and Kyle Moyle was there to claim it the former cherry and white in his second stint with the Pirates has got his own try in this game was not as good it to be it was it was still on target but it just needed to go a little bit more to the left but again this wind is playing havoc with everything from the feeling of people's fingers to the way the ball travels in the air Steel Barker takes the ball he's certainly one to be considered for player of the match he's been outstanding for the Pirates and he's created two tries of his own already in this game and he's there again at the tail of that ruck just working so hard for his team giving it everything he can and that's gone up from Connor Edwards it's gonna come down with ice on it it's also gonna come down with Rory Dawson on it but he's met by Charlie Beckett and Beckett's got his first big big hit of the game there's another big carry. Speaking of big moments from Corey Barrett. 
And scrummage on either side, Barrett makes him a fantastic utility forward for any side up and down the country. And Pirates are the ones taking full advantage of it at the moment. And that kick's gone far too long, and Bennett will call the mark. And wait for the rest of his team to join him. So, a reminder of the score and the headlines from the game. It's Doncaster Knights 17, Cornish Pirates 27. We've had a red card to Malik Holden early in that first half. Or to, sorry, late in that first half, early in this game. After some personal foul play that meant he had to be sent off from the match. Morgan Nelson got the first half tries for the Cornish Pirates. After more tries from the visitors in the beginning of the second half, where they extended their lead to 19 points at one stage. Doncaster then hit back, thanks to the likes of a brilliant score from Joe Margetts and George Simpson. So Gary Addis has left the field now. And Dawson puts boot to ball. Give Pirates a bit of territory, but he's given it to George Simpson. He might have a bit of room on this near side. Brought down nicely by Jack Andrew. And now that's a good carry from Finn Brown, fending away the challenges as they came. And the back to Bennett. They'll have to switch up the side they're playing on. Oh, this could work out. It just went a bit too far. For Joe Mar gets to get on, but I almost thought for a second, because of the way the ball hung in the wind, John Carson the might, Knights might have pulled off something special there. Finn Brown and George Roberts have made their way off the pitch. Both of them have put in one heck of a shift for the home side here at Castle Park. But the job is still not done for the players that remain on the pitch. And that is a difficult start for Cameron Terry, the replacement hooker. But Cornish Byrus knocked it on first at the line out, so nothing too much for the replacement to worry about. So just to give you guys a reminder of the score, because we, we have lost our scoreboard, it's 17-27 currently, Doncaster Knights 17, Cornish Pirates 27, just over 67 minutes played in this game in total, and at one point the Pirates were leading by 19 points, but the Knights have significantly closed the gap now on their visitors. Another missed time of everyone's runs, and Margetts has to track back again. But it is a penalty advantage to Doncaster Knights. And Ollie Fox looks to snipe around the edge of the ruck. It might still work out. Ollie Fox might break through. He wanted to get the offload away to Smeaton. Many might have said he shouldn't have done it, but he had a penalty advantage, which is exactly why he did. So Doncaster have been restored to 14 as well. So there you go, the yellow card just leaving the, the top left-hand corner as well. So that's the most that they'll have left in this game after Malik Holden got a red card earlier on. And here come... The Doncaster Knights now on the edge of the Pirates 22. Great take from Easy Isode. Newly introduced into this game as well. And that ball effort isn't going anywhere. So Terry breaks away with it now down the blind side for Doncaster Knights. And there's a penalty advantage as well. No release from the Cornish Pirates defence. Bennett sends it on into the back line. Margetts has to quickly tap that on. McBride manages 
to clear up the loose ball. Here come the Knights. Izode has it bounce off him. And they try and pass it to George Simpson like a Harlem Globetrotter. But Steele Barker was there instead, who, to be fair, could also be a Harlem Globetrotter with his height. But we're going to go all the way back for a Doncaster Knights penalty. No release in the tackle. Surely Russell Bennett will send this into the corner. Just having a word here with uh, Billy McBride. It is indeed going in the corner. And McBride is going to stand in at this line out. I'll we'll have a word with the referee, sorry. I thought he was going to stand in as a prop. I was quite surprised if he was going to stay there. And he returns to his usual position in the back line. Here come Doncaster. Beckett went to take the ball, but it's bounced off him into the hands of Steel Barker. You can see him grimace as the ball hit his hands. And we enter the final 10 minutes with Doncaster trailing by 10 and the Pirates in possession, however, right on their own try line. Dawson sends this to Simpson. He thought about going quickly, but he elects against it. It will be Doncaster's ball. They got a lot of breathing space there, Pirates from the the work of Rui Dawson, Scotland under 20 of course, and ex-Newcastle Falcons. So he's no stranger to kicking in horrible conditions like these that we're experiencing here today in Doncaster. Isode again, nice easy take out of the line out. Oh, that's a really nice run from Connor Edwards. Here come Doncaster from halfway. Harrison Courtney doing well, the New Zealander. Try and spin around those tackles. Bennett looks to see who's with him, and he's got Cameron Terry. Lovely out the back pass is going in. McBride now, this the latest to do so. It's on that far side with the replacement, AJ Can, the former Cornish Pirate. It's an advantage as well, again for Doncaster. Hands on the floor, Ollie Fox goes quickly. Here they go now, AJ Kant. Doncaster still driving forwards inside the 22 now with Joe Margett. The ball is slowed down on that occasion, so they'll want to inject some pace back into it quickly. Maybe they can do so now. Bennett now, tucks his head. Oh, and he's expelled away from the Pirates 22. That's another big carry from Ben Murphy. It's gone away from Beckett, it's with Bennett. And now once again, McBride goes. He thought about the pass, but he saw the wave of defenders wrapping around on the outside, and Izode so needed to get that ball. And it's another handling error from the court from the Doncaster Knights under pressure from Cornish Pirates that has resulted in a Pirates scrum. It's just so frustrating to watch this happen again for Doncaster. Just those little handling errors invite the Pirates back into possession. And it's at this stage in the game where really it just invites them to take away a large handful of points that are on offer today. The Pirates are currently trailing Ealing, who are at the top of the table by 10 points. So if the game were to finish right here, right now, the Pirates would be claiming the full five on offer and significantly reduce that gap with games still to play. That's not a good scrum picture for the referee to want to play with, and indeed he will reset it. We had this a couple of times in the first half, so hopefully we can get a wriggle on and get another scrum picture established ASAP. on your screens now the Pirates replacement scrum half has done really well since coming on 
very difficult in these conditions as a scrum half to give your side some territory from box kicks, but he's done exactly that. This time, Doncaster win a free kick at the scrum. Ollie Fox surely is going to go quickly. He does, hands it straight to Terry, puts his head down, puts himself into the Pirates 22. Beckett, lovely hands out the back to Bennett, but Bennett's pass didn't go to hand, but they have a penalty for offside against the Pirates. Do they take the points with just over five minutes left on the clock? You surely think they've got to put it in the corner. They're trailing by 10 at the moment. They are pointing for the posts. Well, Russell Bennett's right in front of them. So it would be a, an easy kick for the number 10. As I said earlier on, Plenty of championship experience from that young man. He's already played for both Amtel and Jersey Reds in the championship. And of course, signed for Doncaster Knights after the collapse of the Jersey Reds club. And the fact that they will no longer be competing in this championship season. But hasn't he done well under these new, new conditions? New lights, new stand, new home. And will he give his side new hope? He does exactly that. He slots the three points. He gives Doncaster fans something to cheer about. And they'll march their way up into the 20s. Seven points separate Doncaster Knights and Cornish Pirates now in round 16 of the RFU Championship. It's 2027. Seven points in it. It's one of the final games of 2024. Pirates with the restart, really good take again from Ben Murphy, another player who's definitely got themselves shortlisted for player of the match because he's done everything that he needed to do right so far in this game. He's collected ball well from the air, he's operated well at set pieces, and in open play he's defended with all of his might and carried with all the aggression you'd expect from a front five forward. That's a lovely box kick. Molly Fox again giving his side some good territory. He's complaining about the distance that the assistant has judged him to have got. Feels a bit hard done by there, Fox. But again, it's happened before for Doncaster in this game. The ball has gone out well beyond the halfway line, but they tucked themselves inside their own half still. That didn't look straight, and the referee agrees with me. Of course, he's got a better angle, but even I can see that. Can't throw the ball all the way back to Penzance. He's got to go straight at the line out. Interesting to note as well, actually, it's talked a lot about Ben Murphy and being a front five forward. He's actually switched into the back row. Because even though Doncaster had a back sent off, they decided that that's more important to them than a, a full eight forward pack. So Ben Murphy is on the open side flank. And Isode and Beckett are in the second row engine room together. And that was another twist at the scrum from the Cornish Pirates. And another penalty conceded. It's not the first one of those in this game. And I feel as though their forward dominance might have slipped just a little bit in these closing stages. We've got 90 seconds on our clock and the stadium clock. But the only clock that matters about counting down is the one on the referee's wrist. And there's a lot of complaints going in from the crowd towards the assistant because, again, they also feel like that ball should be much further downfield. And I think even the Pirates fans are agreeing with them just in front of me. And that's a long throw to the back towards Murphy. Josh King gets his hands on it for the Cornish Pirates. Now here comes Will Gibson. We know that the back rower... Loves to run with the ball in hand. 
Houston to his boot to fall to give his side a bit of territory. Simpson now, here goes George Simpson, pins his ears back, tries to run through the middle of two pirate defenders. And he's manhandled to the floor. Bennett, lovely little tip on there to Ben Murphy. Is he held up in the tackle? No, it's a fair tackle. But the penalty because the release wasn't quick enough for the referee. So again, Doncaster Knights will look to send this into the corner. And just an announcement ringing out throughout the stadium of the official attendance for today's game 2012 with us inside Castle Park this afternoon. A huge thank you to all 2,000 plus people who have joined us here today. And indeed everyone that has joined this stream from around the world, wherever you are, thank you for joining us for this game and another delicious round of English Championship Rugby. Doncaster, with the line out, not too far away from the Pirates line. Isode brings it down, and his pack are set, trying to get the drive going. Canteri is at the back, but I think he's realising it's not going anywhere, so Ollie Fox is on it. Here we go now, in the back line with the Pirates, Simpson sends it on one more to McBride. AJ Cran on the far side, AJ Cran, one more to beat, brought down, just short of the line. Still alive here for the Doncaster Knights. It's a bundle of bodies right on the Pirates line. Penalty advantage to Doncaster. Simpson's in acres of space if they want to use him. It was passed by George Simpson. Simpson steps in to try and make the angle of the kick a little bit easier. And that's a huge moment for Doncaster Knights. George Simpson's try means, with the clock expired on our screens, Russell Bennett can tie the game. What a finish from the winger. It's his second of this match. It takes his tally of the season to seven, and it makes him the club's top try scorer as well. We don't know still whether that is the last action in this game. The Knights are looking to set themselves for a kickoff, so I'm assuming not. And here comes Russell Bennett. And it's good! The kick from Bennett is good. It's a tied game. 27 all at Castle Park. Doncaster Knights have come back. They have climbed Everest. Mistakes from either side can be conceded now. Either side could provide a moment of magic, and that could be the thing to decide the game. Here we go. Doncaster bringing it out from the back. Time for both sides to be squeaky clean. Isode, what a big carry from the replacement forward up over his own 22. Bennett looking for Simpson on his inside. Isode once again out the back, that's a mistake from Bennett. But a penalty to Doncaster, not rolling away quick enough for the referee of the Pirates. And the winds of change have blown through this game and the wind has certainly changed in this match too. It's lined up nicely now, Russell Bennett is looking to go to the far side to where he is positioned, but because of the wind, it gave the ball the necessary gusto it needed to get out. And now all of a sudden, it's the Cornish Pirates under pressure. The crowd are really urging the Doncaster Knights now. And neither side will want to settle for a draw. Is Ode. Well, it's been sent out into that back line. Edwards, Margett takes the ball up to the line for Doncaster. Here they go again. Smeaton. Fox 
gives that to Beckett. Bennett. McBride. Oh, Billy McBride was almost through there. Lovely little shimmy of his feet. And it's really got Doncaster on the front foot now. Bennett looking towards that far side and it's going to go out. And the referee checks his watch. That is the end of the game. It's a draw between these sides at Castle Park in round 16 of the championship. You can almost feel that's a game that got away from the Cornish Pirates, but what a display from the Doncaster Knights. Down a man for all of that second half, thanks to the red card late on in the first. And it finishes Doncaster Knights 27, Cornish Pirates 27. And I'll have to consult my calculator to find out how that rejigs the table. A huge thank you to everyone that's tuned in to watch this game and indeed the 2012 fans that have been here with us today and indeed the Pirates fans for making the 370 mile journey up here and for not losing their voice at any stage in this match. And what a performance it was from either side. You almost feel like a draw is like the primary school sports day sort of finish. Both sides deserve something and that's exactly what they got. But there he is on our screen now. You can see him clearly, George Simpson, that man there has had a brilliant game and ultimately got the try that secured the draw for Doncaster Knights. Brilliant play from the winger. He had electric turn of pace for his first and he found himself in the right place at the right time for his second. But with the result of today in mind, let's take a look at the upcoming fixtures that will see the way that Doncaster play out the rest of this season. So, in the next round, they will place Caldy at home. They will be looking to get a big statement win after the results of today against the Cornish Pirates. And then, swiftly afterwards, it's two weeks on the road down to Bedfordshire for the Doncaster side. Amptill and Bedford Blues in quick succession. Both those sides stacked with championship quality and indeed quality that have emigrated across from local leagues in Wales, Scotland and further overseas. And then they're back at home on May the 11th to face Ealing Trail Finders. That's a 2.30 kickoff again. Make sure you go online and get your tickets on the Doncaster Knights website and indeed follow all social media so that you don't miss out on joining us for that match because it is going to be a grudge match for sure. Indeed, both the remaining home matches, make sure you go online, get your tickets, book your hospitality, and make sure you get your stash sorted out as well. And finally, they round off the season with a trip away to Harbury RFC in the championship. That's on May the 25th, and that will be the final game of the season for your night side. Well, and as we enjoy the images of both sides congratulating each other on a big fixture, let's take a look at some of the best moments from that game that we have been treated to today in round 16 of the RFU Championship.
I can safely say I've never felt so small on a rugby pitch before, but I'm joined by one man who's made a very big impact uh, from the bench today for Doncaster Knights. Charlie, first of all, uh, give me your initial reaction to that game before I quiz you a bit more. Uh, I think we're really, really pleased to get three points from where we were. Obviously, losing a man in the first half. We played 10 minutes with 13 men. I think we were down at one point, look at the score, but I think we were 22-3 down with 20 minutes to go. So really, really pleased from there to get the uh, three points. But I actually look disappointed that we didn't take a few of those chance in the first half and then couldn't manufacture a chance at the end there to take all five but I think a 22-3 down if you'd offer us three points in the game we probably would have taken it. Well that leads me nicely into the next point that I want to talk about. Uh, at one stage in this match your side were 19 points down to Pirates. Um, that must seem like a huge mountain to climb. How do you as a side actually pick yourself up and carry yourself forward from that moment? Yeah it was and Pirates are a very very good side. I've been in this league five six years now and Pirates are consistently one of the best teams so I don't think many sides have come back from that 19 point deficit especially man down and it's just it sounds so cliche, and I hate cliche answers, but it is. You just on the post, all we're talking about is stop giving them penalties because that's the, that's how they get in. They're very good at looking after the ball, playing for a penalty, and they go to the corner and they've got a very good rolling ball. So we said we don't want any more penalties in the game and just focus on our next job. And thankfully, we've got a few game breakers inside. Joe Margetts, um, George Simpson, who are a little bit of magic up their sleeve and got us a few tries. And then, like I say, at this point, we couldn't get the full five at the end. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about George Simpson. I mean, he pretty much sealed that draw for you right at the end with that try. Uh, two fantastic scores in this game. And he's really settled in well with Doncaster Knights life since joining, hasn't he? Yeah, he's brilliant, Simo. You look at him and he's got perfect hair all the time. He has his earrings in when he's not on the pitch. You're like, I'm not sure this is the right sport for you, son. And he gets on there and he's tough as they come. He's electric, he's tough, he's feisty. And yeah, I think without him out there today, without a lot of players, but especially his finishing uh, ability off the back of those malls down that wing. If we didn't have him, I don't think it's the uh, same score as we finished today. So a brilliant, brilliant game from Simo. And a quick word on one of your opposite numbers, actually. I kind of shortlisted him for player of the of the match. Steel Barker was electric in that second row for the Cornish Pirates today. How on earth do you deal with a player like that on the pitch? Oh, it's interesting. Steel's a young man who's come into the league and he's very, very good. Like He's an impressive, impressive guy. You obviously, you take note of your opposition uh, players. And also my work with the Championship Plus podcast, we have a view of all the teams. And Steel's a young man doing very well. And I think if he keeps going the way he is, he won't be playing Championship rugby for long, which is brilliant. We don't want to, we don't want these players in Championship. We want to show that the, the league's a great place to have players go up to Premiership and England and that sort of thing. So you just have to deal with him how you would anyone else. Just when he's carrying the ball, try and tackle low try and have a bit of a gamesmanship away from the ball with him, try and take him off his game. But very, very good player and very impressed him, not just today, but the, the whole season. He's, he's a good good player and a good boy still. But how encouraging is it actually on that note of going up to the Premiership that the door is open for Doncaster Knights officially from the RFU to, to make the jump up the leagues and potentially they can get that audit done again next season. You guys can make a real push. Yeah, it's brilliant. Again, we had this conversation on the Championships Club podcast this week. It's brilliant for the club. It shows such what such great work has gone on behind the scenes here. Like, I've been a number of championship clubs now. It's probably the most professional, impressive club off the pitch I've seen here. Look, we've just got to do our job on the pitch now. Like we've got to be winning games like this, getting ourselves in that top spot. So we force the hand of the Premiership of having that playoff at the end of the season, playing against Newcastle and seeing who's the best team to go up. But the off-field side of things has been taken care of. We've got to start taking care of it on the field now. And hopefully in the next few seasons we can be doing that. Well, Charlie, thank you very much for joining me. Post-match, congratulations on such a brilliant game as well. And thank you to everyone for joining us for this live stream live from Castle Park. It's ended 27 all in round 16 of the championship between Doncaster Knights and the Cornish Pirates. But join us very soon here at Castle Park for Caldy, who will be visiting in the next round of championship action. And please cheer on your Doncaster Knights team for the remainder of this 23-24 season. Goodbye for now.